I described uh, the general rules for uh, paying for land movement, uh, but now I'm going to get into the uh, nitty gritty of land movement itself. So moving land units, I already mentioned that you can move by paying one action point uh, along uh, roads, no matter how distant it is, one single movement will cost you a point. But if you're moving outside of the roads, then one, two, three points. You wouldn't do this. You'd probably just go up to here, one, two. But outside of the road, each off-road point, uh, transit point will cost you a point to move. And when you're moving, you can, of course, pass through your own forces. As long as there are your forces, uh, you can pass through them unobstructed. Except for uh, rare cases where the cards will allow you to do so, you can't have more than three units stacked on a, a city or a transit point. Of course, cities are transit points as well. So if you want to move a unit into that city, in this case, um, I would just put this one here. But for whatever reason, if you want to move a unit into a specific city and uh, there are too many units, you will have to remove one of the units. Here's a better example. You move, you want to put this in this city specifically, so you would pay one point to move one of these guys out of the way, and then you put this militia unit over there. But it's not too common to have to do that. The game doesn't really uh, have too many situations where you're forced to um, to put units on a, already an existing stack and, and have to move uh, one of the units out of that stack. It's really more sometimes to maximize the value of the stack and so you put the best units there. As I mentioned, uh, armies have uh, core units underneath them. Uh, a commander is not uh, actually a unit, so uh, this army could take another reinforcement and then that would lead, that would give you the, uh, the maximum three units limit here with the commander. You are able at any time uh, to pay one point and move one of these reinforcement uh, units to, as long as it's unobstructed like it is here, move it to a different army. Like I would put this here, I would have paid a point to move that reinforcement and, and I just put it there from here, right? But let's just say this commander has uh, these two army units and this militia. So it's three units maximum. And when he's moving, he can move the entire command or he can just move part of it. For example, he could just move that, leave that behind and move these forces here, right? Or he could have just left the army. Uh, an army has to stay with the, uh, the reinforcements. He could have left the army and just moved uh, his command being just a militia force itself. If a force has a defense bar and chooses to move anywhere, it has to leave that defense bar behind. Zones of control. Uh, as usual, the zones of control are any points. Zone of control of this uh, army here would be uh, any of these points directly uh, adjacent to it, right? Uh, let's just say this city is already mine. Uh, the red player, if I wanted to go here, that's okay. But let's just say I wanted to go there for some reason. I go into the zone of control. If I'm passing by the zone of control of my enemy at any time, the enemy has uh, an opportunity to attack me. For that to happen, the enemy is going to roll a D2, and on the two, he gets to attack. But usually, as I will explain later, um, he could attack with any of the forces within range. So if any of these forces, like the artillery there, or uh, the tanks units are in range of the enemy, uh, the enemy of the blue is the red, then they would go into the battle. However, because of the entering into uh, the zone of control, the enemy can only attack if he rolls a two, and now he can only attack with his frontline units. So, so he cannot use those ones, uh, any of the forces that are in range. He can only use the ones that are immediately uh, adjacent to the enemy. In this case, it's still quite a lot here. Franco's um, Army of the Levante. Now, the option to attack only happens if you are going into the zone of control 
or uh, passing through the zone of control. If you touch one of the adjacent points, the enemy has a, a chance to attack you. But uh, if you start off the round already in the zone of control, there are many situations, particularly, for example, Madrid. Madrid is usually always surrounded by uh, blue units, so there's always red units and blue units within each other's zones of control. If they start the round that way, nothing happens. The zone of control option to attack only happens if the zone of control is entered into that that round or um, or passed by. We'll talk about encirclements now. Um, a force needs to be always connected to a friendly city. Whether the force is on a city here, uh, there's the city there, a red city and another red city here, uh, re regardless if there's other friendly units or not. Uh, if a force is cut off, hypothetically, let's just say that this was uh, an enemy unit that made its way there, and then you had another unit here. Um, they cut off the access of this uh, unit by road to friendly cities. Uh, there are still there's still access up here to uh, another friendly city here. Uh, but let's just say then that uh, I don't know Capo de Llano uh, would have cut this off here on this choke point with the Army of the South. So as you can see, this unit is cut off to. It's not linked to any friendly city. When that happens, it is uh, encircled or its lines of communications are cut, which for the purposes of this game are the same thing. In the case of a port, uh, if I was to place an enemy unit here, cutting this city off from that one, uh, and then one of the, the blue ships as well here, because there's no, there's no red ships here, so it would occupy the you know the areas near the port. The port is considered to, to be cut off as well, to be encircled. A force that is encircled or cut off immediately receives the uh, yellow cube, which means spent. Spent units are out of supply and uh, will need to, to pay one point to remove the yellow cube before they can attack. Now, a city that is, re uh, that is cut off can receive um, armies or militia into it but it cannot receive reinforcements reinforcements are these and you can get up to two under an army making a total stack of three so it can only receive reinforcements by air there's no other way so you would use the air transportation rule mentioned before and then you'd be able to bring in um, reinforcements artillery uh, but no tanks, and you have to follow the um, air transport rule mentioned before. When I mentioned the uh, land movement actions, uh, air transport, I mentioned that just earlier. It's to be found on the quick reference manual. It is surprisingly hard to for forces to become cut off. This is a, a huge game that encompasses the entire, uh, you know, Spanish Civil War. And so, uh, you know, Encircled forces are usually, we're, we're talking about little battles that would take place in uh, in smaller cities or, or even big cities, that's fine. But we're talking about very specific, very um, detailed. Uh, here we're talking about big encirclements and those, because of the nature of the front lines, are, are more difficult. They are possible, like I showed you, uh, but it doesn't happen too often. You would think that Madrid, okay, I can encircle Madrid. No, you. it's not that easy to encircle Madrid because... Like I said, even if you encircle the whole area around Madrid, technically, because of the rules, uh, Guadalajara here is linked to Madrid. So you would have to encircle Guadalajara and uh, Aranjuez uh, as well. And um, you'd have to encircle all those red cities. There aren't any more here, but uh, so that Madrid will become encircled. And usually there, you know, anything that gets close to it, there will be battles fought there for Guadalajara, for the Harama River that happened in real life. Aircraft can be moved anywhere uh, off the transit points. So unlike all the land units that must go uh, into any of these points, the aircraft uh, goes off the points, but you can't move it into enemy territory. Um, so this whole zone here is red. Now here, this zone is clearly blue. Uh, if this zone was red, if that city was taken, it would have had a, uh, you know, if this was red, it would be it would be uh, marked otherwise. If not, then you can see that this is all blue, the blue zone. So you wouldn't be able to bring a, a red 
uh, aircraft units there. Or for example here either because that's all blue territory you would have to bring it uh, close to your forces as close to the front line as possible um it might seem a little bit complicated here but once you're playing the game it's it's quite clear where the front line is so you can't bring aircraft into any of the enemy areas again aircraft units uh, we're talking about 50 or 100 airplanes um and um, you know by placing an aircraft here for example it just means that within uh, this range here, there are enough airfields to sustain that. So you can't bring it to the enemy area because you would not be able to use their airfields unless they were captured by your land forces.